The air around us is teeming with life, from minute insects to the products of man's ingenuity. Man has always been fascinated by the sky and the creatures that move around in it with such ease. Dragonflies are beautiful insects with brilliant body colours and shining wings. They are carnivorous insects with powerful jaws and prey on other insects. They don't sting and are quite harmless to humans. The male and female usually stay together from the time of fertilisation to the time when the female deposits her eggs, so you can often see them flying around in tandem in the late spring or summer. Bees are truly fascinating creatures. We hear people talk about being as busy as a bee, but it's only when you stop and look and keep on looking that you realise just how very hard a bee really works. It seems to go on searching for pollen incessantly, darting about with such wonderful ease from one flower to another. The honeybee is a social insect, which means it lives with many other bees. In fact, a single colony can consist of several thousand, though only one of that colony will be a queen. She is the most important bee in the hive, because she lays the eggs and is the mother of all the other bees. Before I made this film, I had always imagined butterflies flew slowly and lazily in the warm air of summer. But you watch carefully and notice how speedily a butterfly can move from one place to another. More than any other flying creature, the bird has surely been of greatest interest and frustration to man. Frustration because he envies the way the bird can fly with what seems to be effortless skill and speed. He envies its ability to fly to great heights, to glide, to hover, to swoop, and just to be there in the sky. For countless centuries, ever since man has lived upon the earth, he has been full of wonder at the flight of birds. The Greek legend of Daedalus and his son Icarus is a reminder of the envy man has felt of the power of flight. Father and son fixed feathers with wax to their bodies. Icarus, the legend goes on, was too ambitious and flew too near the sun. The wax melted and he plummeted down to earth to his death. Ballooning was one of the first aerial exploits man attempted successfully. In 1783, the French Montgolfier brothers built a most impressive, colourful balloon, filled it with hot air, and up it rose, eventually falling to earth two miles away. In the same year, they tried again, using a duck, rooster, and a sheep as the first passengers to fly. air ballooning is still a popular sport and providing the wind is not too strong and you have a number of willing helpers to get it unpacked filled and launched you can rise to dizzy heights in a tiny basket 
with the warm summer air and the birds as your only companions. Progress from the early days of ballooning to powered flight was very slow and it wasn't until 1903 that this was achieved by Orville and Wilbur Wright in the USA. The early aeroplanes were very flimsy in construction and needed great skill and nerve to operate them. Six years later, Louis Blériot made the first flight over the sea by crossing the English Channel from Calais to Dover. He made the crossing in 37 minutes and at no time was he more than a hundred feet above the water. Man was now marvelling at his ingenuity in being able to join the birds. Progress in aircraft design increased rapidly and man wasn't content solely to be able to fly and soon found how valuable it was to be able to use his invention in warfare. The early fighter plane had one gun but, as we know, this increased and soon he had devised huge bombs which could be dropped from safe heights. Now he too could climb high, he too could swoop, and he could even hover, but more about that later. An Englishman by the name of Sir George Cayley had made a glider which carried a boy in 1852. One of the greatest gliding aviators was the German Otto Lilienthal, who experimented successfully with this form of flight for five years until he was killed in 1896. As with ballooning, gliding is an exciting and exhilarating experience. Unlike the hot air balloon, the glider has a great degree of control and can be manoeuvred successfully by the pilot irrespective of the wind. Some gliders become airborne by a stationary winch catapulting them into the air but it's more common to see a small tug aircraft like this one pulling the glider up to the desired height. When the glider pilot reaches the height of his choice, he releases the cable and he is alone with just the sound of the slipstream brushing past. Now he will gradually descend, maybe taking about 15 minutes or more to do so. But if he wished to climb, he would circle around trying to find warm air, or a thermal as it's called, which would lift him higher. Trying to describe the wonderful feeling of literally floating in space with 2,000 feet of nothingness supporting you is almost impossible because you have to experience it to know what it's really like. Look at the main roads. They just look like narrow strips of dirty ribbon with insects of various sizes moving along them. Look at the school with its swimming pool and tennis courts. And now we're banking with one wing pointing steeply to the ground and the other up at the clouds. The airship was developed from the balloon at the beginning of this century. Count Ferdinand von Zeppelin was one of the greatest pioneers of this form of flight. Now man could hover or move at a leisurely speed. But the hydrogen used to fill the airship was highly inflammable 
and because of a number of disastrous accidents, the airship virtually disappeared. Nowadays it's filled with helium and its development is again assured. The next important development in hovering came with the helicopter. And today we have a supersonic jet, the Harrier, which has the same capabilities of the helicopter, but is over eight times faster. And now the aeroplane is fully established. Jet engines have enabled man to travel faster than the speed of sound. So, in less than 70 years, man has more than competed with the birds. He has left them far, far behind. He can fly higher and faster, but his heart is still with them, watching them, imitating them, still envious of them. still has to rely on technology to get him airborne. He needs power to keep him in the skies, and he needs great skill to fly one of his mechanical birds. Yet skilled or not, he can ride high above the clouds and look down on the birds. Flight is available to anyone who can afford it and millions do fly every year in all corners of the world. When you realize that every time you take a breath, an aircraft is either landing or taking off in some part of the world, it shows how popular and necessary an amenity flight has become. In the body of this gigantic steel bird, 362 passengers can relax in comfort and speed across oceans and continents at 600 miles an hour. Shortly after takeoff, the plane will be set to automatic pilot and, like a homing pigeon with a computer brain, will speed accurately towards its destination. Passengers will eat and drink, talk or read, sit or sleep, listen to music or watch a film whilst the earth rushes by. 35,000 feet below. Man has achieved a great ambition, there's no doubt. If he can do so very much in 70 years, 
what wonders will we see in the sky in the twenty first century?